Neil. It's Cam Nichols. How are you, mate? Mate, you know how you told me to put my seat up last night? I didn't tell you. I cut the chimney off my BMC yesterday as well. Small dick syndrome. I'm a flaming glad, Neil. That's all right. Come on, Drew. How do the cranks go? Good. Right. Yeah, no, no, there. Does seem weird. Yeah. What are those things? A good weird. A, of A good weird. Right. Yeah, that's good. So, if you didn't watch last week's video, I'll put it somewhere up there in case you want to check it out. But in a nutshell, Last week, I took my BMC team machine into my local bike shop, Trilogy Cycles, here on the Sunshine Coast to get new cranks installed, which are 7.5 millimeters shorter. At the same time, we cut the top off my chimney on the BMC team machine, which essentially made the front end of the BMC shorter because we cut the steerer tube off and the back end, so where the seat is, taller had to go up and down because what I neglected at the time was the crank length change meant that I had to put the seat up and I was worried had I wrecked my BMC team machine for my purposes anyway so after I edited that video and published it last week I quickly jumped back on a phone call with Neil Stanbury to get the full lowdown on the change in seat height and how to manage that. And while on the phone with Neil, he was explaining to me after watching my video that he actually thinks the chimney chop will not be an issue because of what the cranks are gonna to do to my overall body position. So I said to Neil over the phone, I said, can you explain that to everyone for me? And he kindly said yes, so I barged into his house two days ago and he's got some pretty interesting insights to share about this crank length change and the positive impact it's gonna to have to my position, making the chimney cut a non-issue. But before he talks about that, I got Neil to briefly discuss the methods of moving the seat up when you change crank lengths, because there are a ton of questions about that in the last video, so let's get into it. Basically, the easiest way to explain it is, is as the crank gets shorter, your leg has to reach less far to the bottom of the stroke. So it's logical that the seat height would need to go up yes. to maintain the same kind of angle, if you like, at the bottom of the stroke. And, and I don't measure seat heights or, or dictate seat heights by, based upon knee angles at all. I, I set seat height based upon control of the leg extension. Um, but in general, it will need to go up. Now there's this, occasionally, it, it, there's a really, a really rare possibility that there'll be an exception to that rule and the seat height won't need to change if the, the person's a really extreme heel dropper or the crank length change makes some other major sort of uh, change to their, to, their, to their motion of their leg. But in general, the seat will need to go up somewhere between five and 10 millimeters. So the variation depends a lot upon what the person does when you raise, well, sorry, when you shorten their cranks. Basically, the seat needs to go up by an, an amount that varies. Sometimes between five and, and, and 10 millimeters it seems to be about the right range, but sometimes up to 15 millimeters. If the person's having a lot of trouble controlling the bottom of the stroke with like a 172.5 crank, and you shorten the crank by, you know, by seven and a half millimeters, and suddenly their leg starts to gain proper control of the bottom of the stroke. Sometimes that 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 will really raise their that their, their necessary raise of their seat height will go up a lot, and you might need to raise their seat up to fifteen millimeters. Wow. It all depends upon the person. And I haven't seen you riding this thing yet, but I said, yeah, I'll just raise it five millimeters to start with. Yeah. Um, before, you know, until I can see you on the, on the bike and check out what's happening with your leg extension. And so the, the idea is that your seat height needs to go up, but then that person, if their crank length was limiting their pelvic rotation forwards, by shortening the cranks, you will increase the ability of that person to, to anteriorly rotate their pelvis, to, to roll their pelvis forward. And as you do that, if you imagine your hip is a, a ball and socket joint operating like this, it's gonna go forward and down, right? As you roll your pelvis forward. So that 
then brings the center of rotation of the hip forward and down closer to the cranks again. So that can, that can be where the, the seat height changes more than the crank length changed. Right. So as, as the hip goes down and forward, yes. the, hip, the hip's rotational center gets closer to the crank. And so you may need to go up and back more than the seven and a half millimeters. Right. And it depends basically upon how much that individual rider makes that change mm. and if they do it a lot you might need to go up by 15 millimeters you know and and so i'm hoping that in your case your hip impingement which is reasonably severe if it becomes significantly unloaded as opposed you know on the shorter cranks your hips are going to roll forward and down more so you you will need to raise and possibly move the seat back a little bit wow. um, that that varies a lot depending upon the rotational angle of their pelvis, how much that affects their hamstring engagement at the bottom of the stroke. Right. Some people, as you roll their pelvis forward, their, their hamstrings go from being completely useless and doing nothing to suddenly engaging across the bottom of the stroke a lot more, and then they will, they will need to move the seat back or, or sometimes forward. Um, and they may bear their weight differently on the saddle as right. well. And as they roll their pelvis forward, the, the, the sit bones, the ischiopubic rami, they, they curve in three dimensions. And so as you roll your pelvis forward, you might sit deeper into the saddle or more shallowly up on the saddle, which can change the effective seat height as well. Right. So our hope with you is that because you, you previously had this very rounded C-shaped curve in your back due to, due to a posterior rotation of your pelvis um, on, the, on the seat, my hope is that if you start rolling your pelvis further forward here, your effective torso length, the, the, you know, if we took a, an imaginary dimension between your, your hip and your shoulder, yes. it's actually gonna get longer yes. because your spine will straighten out. So you, you'll go from being hunched to hopefully more extended. And that can, that can be a significant, a significant change. And so the front end will need to quite likely go out and possibly down or just down or just out. <laughs> it could be, it depends upon the person as to how much their spinal posture changes. But Steve Hogg uses this um, reference on his website and I like it as well. He calls it effective torso length because obviously we're not really changing the length of your torso, but we're changing the shape of it which effectively changes the length of your torso. You know, if you look at me from the side with, with a hunched body, my head goes down, you know, 30 millimeters. If I straighten my spine out, it goes up 30 millimeters. So your effective torso length on the bike can change quite significantly with a crank length change up or down. Yeah. If the hip impingement is causing an issue like, like it was for you. So my hope is that you'll roll further forward here, your front end will go out and down, and we may end up having to run a 10 mil longer stem and having to drop it 10 to 15 millimeters as well as raising the seat. Wow. So this is where the- You just find what has already happened that I've left it there and I've raised it 15, go down even further. It, yeah, it may need to drop down to be you know, the, the, the holy grail of road cycling, the slam, slam. stem, right? right. Um, and, you know, that, that would be nice because of the aerodynamic advantages that it, that it brings to, to you as a, as a racing cyclist. Um, but we're not doing it to make you more aerodynamic. We're doing it to make you more comfortable because if, if you roll your pelvis further forward and your torso gets longer, suddenly those bars are going to be too high and too close to you and, and you're going to prop yourself on them and bear more weight on your hands like we talked about in the, in the balance section of, that, of, of the video that we did before. Yeah. And so you may find that you get some unintended consequences of shortening the cranks like you start getting numb hands because you're bearing so much weight on your hands and suddenly you need to drop down the bars and lengthen them out to, wow. get, to get the weight to come back off your hands. Okay. So it changes the whole kind of effective balance of the rider by changing their pelvic rotation. Mm. And that, I should qualify that, that only really occurs if there's hip impingement in play. Quite, quite probably, yeah, yeah. I, I teach for, for serious cyclists who've got good bike handling skills, I'll often tell them to sort of ride with their forearms on the bar for a while, just, just for five minutes, two or three times a ride to condition that anterior rotation because it kind of forces them into that forward rotation of the pelvis. Um, and also to ride on, on what I call the, the joystick position, which is to hold the hood there and drop their, drop their elbow down horizontal, you know, their forearm horizontal to the ground. And that again will start to condition that anterior rotation of the pelvis. Yes. And um, if you've spent a lifetime riding your bike, 
bike with a, with a posteriorly rotated pelvis and we suddenly give you the ability to, to not do that, it does still take a bit of time to change that, that ingrained motor technique, you know, that ingrained patterning. So um, you, you'll need to think about it briefly, but it will very, be, very soon become normal to you. Yeah. Right. And how did you go noticing the, the cadence increase that usually comes with it? So what I'm gonna do next week is share my initial first impressions on the crank length change. It's too early for a comprehensive review yet, but certainly there are some things that I have noted that I think it's worthwhile sharing at this point in time. Some things that are positive and also some things that I'm a little bit concerned about. Now, I wanted to quickly mention that the chimney that I talked about last week in the video, I focused very much on aesthetics and I neglected a very important safety item, which I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel. There's a very good video that Rayol did from Lucia Technic, which I'll link to below if you wanna check that out. And I'll leave you with some scenes now of my wife on Zwift doing some training. I'll catch you all in the next video. <laughs> What's going on, boy? What are you, what are you doing, Alice? Baking a cake for you, babe. Yeah? Yeah. You're doing new training sessions on Zwift. How's that going? It's good. I like it. I mean, I'm not watching it, but... What are you doing? I'm watching Netflix. <laughs> on your phone? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. What show are you watching? Cinema, season three. Yeah, I'll let you get back to it. Thank you.